All right, guys, so those were the questions that were posted here and sent in. So at this point, we'll jump into uh, some thoughts for the overnight, and then we'll wrap it up. So, um, you know, for now, that bullish theme is uh, in play. And uh, if we look at the, uh, the daily chart, I should probably clean this up. It's super messy. Uh, let's see if this one's any cleaner. Well, a little bit. Okay, so if we look at uh, you know the daily chart, we can see that the market is essentially testing, you know, these swing highs, right, from over here on the daily. So it's the upper edge of a previous balance area that's being tested. It is a important short-term inflection point. Uh, the market is now bumping up against larger time frame resistance. Uh, you can see that, you know, we got a sell response from that area. Now, as a day trade, uh, you still wouldn't be shorting the zone because of the time of day, right? It's in the last half hour. Zone fades in the last half hour are quite risky. So, you know, I'm not saying that we'd be shorting this today. But on the larger time frame, you know, level being taken out by four or five points means nothing, right? So you kind of have to uh, adjust your view based on the time frame you're looking at. You know, when you look at the daily chart and you say that, you know, the high over here is 25.75, well, that high being taken out by, you know, four points is nothing when you compare the daily or when you look at it on the daily. Uh, so right now, I think that, uh, you know, the market's been quite bullish. We've been on this uh, pretty decent run. And uh, not to say that the market can't push a bit higher but as it does, you know, this is a really decent area of big resistance on the larger time frame. You know, you have this short-term balance area high or swing high that the market's testing. And there is at least the potential for sellers to start stepping in in more meaningful ways than we've seen over the last several days. So we can acknowledge that the market's been quite strong over the last week or so, but at the same time, it is now bumping up against bigger resistance. Now, because we're looking at the daily chart, this is not going to be a five-point area. You know, you can see that this, uh, you know, this this whole area extends up into and almost towards 3,200. You know, this is like the, um, you know, the balance area low that we broke down from, you know, you can see there's a swing low here. This is the breakdown area. So everything from like 3125 all the way up towards 3200 is fairly decent resistance. And that's why if you look at, you know, even the, uh, even the zones, you'll note that as we head higher, you know, all of these are strong areas of resistance. These are all larger time frame areas of resistance, you know, which is not typical. You know, usually we don't have three consecutive, you know, or even in this case, four consecutive larger time frame zones in a row. But looking at the daily chart, I hope you can see the logic behind that, that, you know, this whole area is actually a big area of resistance in the market. And um, I don't think that we're just going to slice through it, especially given that, uh, you know, on the daily chart, this upside move originates down over here, right? I mean, this is the uh, this is the important swing low. So we've moved from the low 2900s into now the 3100s. For the most part, pretty linear uh, direction to the upside into that zone, into that big area. So I don't think that on the larger time frame we're just gonna, you know, take this area out. I think that there is potential for this area to be even a short-term failure point on the larger time frame, right? So I think we're going to need to be pretty careful with the longs going forward. Uh, I think today the long idea made sense because we were breaking another short-term consolidation. Uh, but now as the market pushes higher, you know, as we look at the 30-minute chart, um, I think we had one over here, maybe. Well, let's just look at this one. So looking at, you know, e even this chart and what's happened, um, you know, we're going to start to get exhausted as we move higher into uh, resistance. If we 
look at just the recent balance, you know, you can see that the smaller daily balance that we're breaking out of looks kind of like this, right? Yesterday was the breakout attempt. It succeeded. Today's the follow through. 100% extension takes you up to 39. We're starting to hit larger resistance. I think it's going to become more difficult for the market to continue heading higher the way that it has. And even if we look at what's happened over the last several days, you'll see that, you know, it wasn't just this situation where the market just went up in a straight line and never looked back. You know, every time it hit resistance, there have been responses. And I think that uh, given the level of response that we got in the 3,050 to 60 area, um, as we push higher and if we push higher, those responses could get uh, even more pronounced and because we're going to be running into bigger and bigger resistance. So up until today, things have been bullish. We can acknowledge that. It doesn't mean it has to be bullish going forward. So on the short term, despite the bullish pattern, I think that my short term bias tomorrow is most likely going to be neutral uh, because we need to be cautious. We need to uh, I'm not saying that we need to press the bearish case with no evidence from the market. But what I'm saying is that if in real time you start to note weakness and bearishness come into play, understand that there could be a larger time frame pattern being built as well that is also bearish. And, uh, you know, it might not be just a little blip uh, to the downside. So we're not predicting a failure, but we're open to that idea. And if it starts playing out, then because we're open to it and prepared for it, we are less likely to get run over by it. So um, I think that, uh, you know, it's going to be a bit challenging you know, over the next few days as the market kind of figures out what to do with this larger time frame area. And if you look at the NASDAQ, you know, it's almost back up towards its all-time high, which is a major inflection point. And I think how NQ behaves going forward is going to be insightful as well. You know, if it puts in a clean breakout above its all-time high and just continues rallying, um, then at least short-term, that could lift the S&P. But uh, I think we have to be very careful here at these higher prices on the long side. You know, we need to start playing a bit more defense at these higher prices. And if a bearish day starts to develop, um, it might not be just a bearish day. It might be the beginning of a bearish swing that might last several days. So uh, we're going to be on the lookout for that. You know, is it going to happen from today's high? Is it going to happen from... The resistance areas that are further above, um, I don't know. You know, that's yet to be seen. You know, is there going to be kind of a blow-off move into that big resistance, and then it's going to turn? Who knows? Uh, you know, I don't know that. Um, and we're day trading, so we really shouldn't be as concerned about that stuff. But it's important to know the backdrop. You know, it's important to uh, know kind of the, the environment and the situation you're dealing with so that if uh, the date does start to develop into a much more bearish day that we're not just thinking, oh, let's wait to get, you know, until it gets exhausted and then buy the support and it'll go right back up into resistance. That might not be the case anymore. I know that's been the case over the last week. It doesn't mean that it has to be the case going forward. So, um, you know, I think we're going to have to be uh, pretty nimble and uh, flexible and, uh, you know, just be a little bit more careful because the market is now at this larger time frame inflection and we don't want to get caught uh, essentially in the crossfire between larger time frame players you know and there could be some whippy moves back and forth we just don't want to get caught in between that with our you know little day trade stuff right so uh let's just be mindful of the environment we're trading in that's kind of the basis for the day trades that get triggered and um, I think that uh, given where we're trading, it might take a little bit of time, who knows, but it could be eventually setting us up for a better trading environment, for a more volatile environment. 
uh, because it is now going to force larger time frame players to make a decision. You know, that's what happens anytime the market hits a larger time frame inflection point. You know, what's an inflection point? It's a decision point, right? And when we say larger time frame inflection, it's a larger time frame decision point. It's a point where larger time frame players have to, you know, place their bets one way or the other. And when that happens, that usually results in an increase in volume and volatility, which usually means increased opportunity with also a little bit of increased risk. So that's what we're dealing with right now. And, uh, you know, as day traders, we'll take it day by day. But that, I think, is the bigger theme that happens to be in play right now based on where we are today. All right, guys, that is a wrap for the coaching session. If you are trading the E-mini S&P or would like to, then uh, I strongly recommend joining the eminiplayer.net site. That way you're getting the daily updates and you are up to speed on exactly where the market is and uh, you know, you're, you're following kind of how we're adapting to it day by day. All right, that is a wrap. Have a enjoyable rest of the day. Have a great week and we'll catch up next week. Same time over here. All right, guys, take care. Good night.